Scott wants to burn this thing down. I think I think my biggest complaint with the whole thing though is if I had a year to work on this every year and everyone told me it sucked every year, I would find a way to make it better. <laughs> but they just there accept it mediocrity. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> they accept mediocrity year after year after year. <laughs> This episode is presented by Whoop. Performing your best every day requires an understanding of the relationship between your physical exertion, mental load, sleep quality, general health, and your body's ability to bounce back. Optimize your training and recover with Whoop. Use code MAYHEM for 15% off at whoop.com. Use the team invite code COMM-MAYHEM to join the Mayhem Athletes community on Whoop and be included in giveaways and exclusive offers. Are we on? Are we rolling? We're on. Scott wants to burn this thing down. I don't know if that's coming now or later, but we don't have to. We don't have to start. I don't. We don't want the podcast to be a like a downer. Like we don't want to yeah. be the like everything is on fire all the time. But we also want to be a source. We gotta do some uppers every now. And we then. got a firefighter, you know. You see, we want to do. You but yeah, but we want to also do a. We want to like. We're gonna tell you how we feel. We're gonna wear our emotions on our sleeves at times. You know, it's something oh, yeah. we believe in. Mm-hmm. We believe yeah, in this wholeheartedly. Thing. Yeah. Well, my complaint, I don't know what we believe in, but we my, believe in it. We believe in something. My, com- Mike, my complaint has my been compl- harbored for four years, so I wouldn't say I'm wearing my emotion on my sleeve. Okay. And I'm, Scott's pretty non-emotional I until know. he flips that switch, and then he's one of the most <laughs> emotional and, and, and people I've ever met. And so to, to date, that's like a Sasquatch. Like, it's never been caught on film. I know, right? Like we, uh, we got, it, no, it's been on, not on film. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say, we've seen we, it. Oh, we've seen it. We've seen it. I mean, I'd like the world to see it, I just it, love the fact that you know, I said Scott's gonna burn it down. Where he's like, "Hold on, hold on." Like, <laughs> I feel well, like I feel like there's without Scott on here, there's like three different things going on here. There's usually the fire starter, the peacekeeper, and then I'm like, I can see both angles. You're and carry, I'm, you're can like a I'm water a can and a yes. drip torch. I'm like the moderator where sometimes I'll yeah, sometimes I'll toss Feed a little fire. fire, and sometimes I'm like, hey, cool it down chill a it out. And so. <laughs> I'm really interested to see where Scott lands, and I don't really know what we're going to talk about, or okay, if we're okay. even going to talk about. It, but he's fired well, up about something. But to your point, also, like I love the way he set it up. Me. He's like, "Well, this is something I've been harboring for four years." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. "Oh, you <laughs> sound real fired up." But that also means if he's been harboring it for that long, it's something yeah. pretty big it's because Scott's can usually disconnect from the emotional decision of, you know, like we'll get fired up about something, and Scott's kind of yeah, whatever. I mean, he might be fired up about it, but it's more like he's talking in this tone versus us where we're just <laughs> him harboring. That makes me think about when we we're, we we're at church on Sunday and, um, Man, you're a big white guy, eh? big white guy. Yeah. The greens just match. So like, right. I don't want to wear one green and one like different kind of green. I feel like these got to do well. that. Mm. We've got to do that commercial. What? Just all the Wayne's world commercial. Oh, absolutely. Dude. A um, remake of the sellout mm-hmm. at church. I oh, like uh, how you had to throw in church. Like, so you're a stand-up person. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pastor Bobby was talking about, like, not holding in your anger. And, like, it, it's they're doing the relationships is the the name of the, the series? series. It's, uh like, not holding in your anger. Like, that's, like, the scariest person. The scariest spouse is somebody who, like, can hold the anger at a certain point. Like, when you see two people, like, fighting often, like, at least they're, like, hashing it out and they're, like, figuring out their differences. Like, when you start to just a be... silent qu- person. Yeah, you start to be quiet. You know, you're, like... Someone they're like nagging on you and you don't say anything like that's not a good sign. Yes. <laughs> you just like you're okay with it. You don't give a crap. Never been there. To, to your point, <laughs> actually, good news is the Leadville documentary is coming out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah but as you know, like over the over the last couple of months, people were like, when's it coming out? When's it getting like you know Scott building? He, and I don't know what he's doing. He's like he's just checking Instagram all day. It's not like he's working. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so so who was it Never the mind. other day that hit that text thread and they were like. Tell Scott to hurry it up on the documentary. Ar- Arthur. I was like, nah, dog, you I was tell like, him. <laughs> Arthur text. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I will not tell Scott to hurry up. I wasn't on that thread. Not, no, no I you know. definitely were not. I know. <laughs> I didn't want you to kill him. It was a random thread. It was about this year's Leadville. It was about the and giveaway. Like, yeah. And so he's like, well, if Scott would finish that, I was like, mm-mm. No, like sir. Easy for you to say because you won't be in the building when he comes in here with a, with a weapon. And well, he's been yeah. here at 6 a.m. every day. Yeah. Ironically, the video comes out, I think, a day after the sign-up closes, right? The close up, it, the clo- the sign up. Closes today, right? No, it closes on the sixteenth. So oh, tomorrow's fourteenth. One day early then. Oh, yeah. nice, perfect. So yeah. Friday is when it ends. So the just 16th. like you planned it. So you timed it perfectly. Yep. Um, um, I meant, 
I meant I planned it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, of course. Of course, uh, of course. Yeah, I mean, tell the people what went into that, man. This has been this has been months. It's not been literally as if you've been sitting in your hands. Other things came up, but you put a lot of time, energy, and effort into it. It was a six-camera shoot Yeah, over well, 100 miles. So the difficult part was um, mostly that I – I thought I was going to put it out like September or October, even though I put would have put the same amount of effort into it. What happened was hunting what season. Happened was hunting season. Ah. Yeah. And it's um, kind of spiraled. Yeah, because yeah. so we killed lots September, of September we were just out there a lot and so super busy and then I it was such a good hunt and we're trying to push Mayhem Hunt so much at that point we had kind of decided we we're going to push it. And so I felt it was very important the timeliness of getting that content out. And then I was like, okay, November, I'll start really working on it. Cause I was tinkering with it in free time. And, um, then we went on and hunt. then we, cause I didn't think the cow Two hunt months. would be a big deal, but then Rich killed the bear. And I was like, okay, that bull elk was his first big break. This bear is the second big break. I need to get this video out. Yep. Like people need to see this. And so just one thing after another took people a while. People loved that video too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I didn't really get to. And then January, I went to, in back-to-back weekends, we had Wadapalooza, the Novix hunt, the meat eater trip. So it was like, just so much stuff going on. Yeah. But it's done now. Chasing around Rich Froning is a full-time job. Yeah. I, and I've said this before, though, but like any anytime you want me to jump on the keyboard, man, the keyboard and mouse, like I'll do some cuts for you. you yeah, know? I think that might yeah. waste my time more I would more throw that thing right together. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you just we, plug it into AI? We could release the day after. Yeah. I wish I could plug I know, it into right? AI. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Podcast does. So Leadville Doc, you can see Rich uh, preparation and then race day and, and yep. all the things that go into it. Yeah, it starts it starts a little farther out with training. Um, Thad discusses how Rich's initial plan was terrible. <laughs> and then it shows That's Rich it. training better. Um, and then we go into the pre-race, race, post-race. Sweet. So that goes out Thursday. Yeah. So when this podcast comes out, it'll be out. Sweet. Yeah. Mm. So this will be old news by then. No, people care. will still be watching it. No, <clears throat> it'll get a lot of views. All right. I'm. I mean, I sh- let's just go, man. You want to double? You want to back it up now? Like with some? That was our happy happy. You want to throw yeah. down? Like you know, spit in that microphone real quick. Mountain Ops has combined my two biggest passions, fitness and the outdoors, as well as sourcing quality ingredients. Mountain Ops Supplements has helped me get the most out of my training sessions in and out of the gym. If you want to start taking your results seriously, I've put together a bundle of Mountain Ops products. New and returning customers save 20% on their purchase when you visit mountainops.com and use the code FRONING. That's M-T-N-O-P-S dot com, code F-R-O-N-I-N-G. Um, do we want me to? We this own the this, show. It's the Rich Froning podcast. Show. What do you so, got, Scott? Air out your grievances. Let's get let's get nasty. So let me let me back it up because okay. as I said, this has been an issue for a while. Actually, I'm going to back it way up. So for reference of what I'm about to say, my background before working here was always in sports. Whether it was like freelance for professional sports, I worked in collegiate sports, high level, low level, done like freelance for TV stations, for the new, like, sports highlights, whatever. So I I say that to say I've been around a lot of leagues before. And when I got here, it was the 2020 games, so that was a wash, COVID. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Yeah, that doesn't count. Erase that whole year. Yeah, because there's no competitions. Uh, The next year was my first experience with, like, an actual event, and it was the semifinal. And that first one, we had incredible access. It was a great experience uh, at the Mac. Mac. Yeah, Mac. And then I went to the game. It was Mac when it was sanctionals, and they owned it. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Syndicate the next week? No, no, no. That oh. was 2022. Okay, right. 2021 was, just Mac. was Mac. Right. Gotcha. Great experience. First experience at the games, and it was okay, but it wasn't like you couldn't do some of what you should be able to do. Wait, so the Mac was your first cross the competition, like being in the back and everything? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then the, you know. the games, we had, you had like okay access in terms of like really good access at North Park, pretty good access at the Coliseum. But that was my first intro to, hey, you can't go in the warm up area and do this, that, and the other thing. Because to me, like I'm always used to kind of going where I want because I worked for a <laughs> team or whatever. Yeah, I don't really understand the not, as an athlete even, I don't understand why that you can't have your video 
guys and girls coming I'll co- back. I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. 2022 <laughs> um, was different because we were working on the documentary project for you. Mm-hmm. So I had special access. Um, 2023 was <laughs> the like the best it's ever been. Like 2023 games, I think CrossFit nailed it. Got it absolutely right. Because we were able to, there might be others, but us, HWPO, Proven, uh, Savan, and uh, Buttery Bros had pretty much all access in terms, you couldn't go on the floor, but you go in the warm-up area, we had whatever. Let me preface this. CrossFit has no media department. Right. Go ahead. Um, could go wherever we want, right? And that was cool. And it was the first time where I, like, it, other than 2022 for me personally, but no one else had that access, but for me personally. But in 2023, I felt like a, a legitimate media member able to do my job. Fast forward to a couple weeks ago, and CrossFit sends out an email, and they informed us that there is very limited space at the new venue. And with that limited space, there will be some seats available. And, but you, you can't expect a press pit, right? No press pit. So. But you have to purchase a seat. No, well, no. you could purchase a seat, right? But. <laughs> but we were, so, we'll, so I was like, okay, we'll buy a couple seats and then we'll have a couple in the block that they allow for media. Because pretty much they said, if you've gotten passes in the past, don't expect to get them. If you got a certain amount, don't expect to get that amount. So in my head, we'll get like two, right? I mean, I don't know, but let's just say two. So I wanted to buy a couple of seats. Well, the seats are sold out. So they, they put this out they put after, after they the seats were sold out. out. Yeah. Right. <coughs> not a mistake. So, <laughs> so, th- <laughs> yeah. so, not so then <laughs> in my head, so, so then we went to Josh, uh, Josh Malone to see if we could get the affiliate block or whatever, but that had already closed the affiliate presale or whatever. Um, and so pretty much our last chance to get more than like two passes or however many we end up getting would be, um, I Using guess athletes, athlete yeah, athletes can get a certain amount. We can buy their tickets from them. I'm not we'll sure. See. But all that to say, I think we're... After you pay your $600 to compete. Yeah, TBD not, on that. Yeah, not sure. just... Uh, Sorry, after I pay your $600 <laughs> to compete. <laughs> I, think, I think that not just us, but a lot of people are going to have serious problems with the CrossFit Games. But what I'm getting to is I think it's a bigger issue because looking back to like when CrossFit hit its peak and then died, they killed their media, right? And I think a lot of the momentum that they're starting to get back is, is outsourced media. Is outsourced media. <coughs> and Which so now blocking and banning. Right. You're gonna not blo- banning, but right. making more inadvertently inadvertently advertently blocking. So my hot topic is that do we think there's another push to uh, disable or handicap the sports side of CrossFit? Because they don't have internal media. That are that's doing anything meaningful. Do you so think you're asking if they're shooting themselves in the foot on purpose. Is that what you're saying? Maybe. I, so I it, don't think they're doing it on purpose. I I would. I think they're doing. I think they're shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. My, my guess. My doing. guess would be that. Um, <coughs> they think they effect, know what's best. No, effectively it'll go to the highest bidder. So like, hey, well, yeah, with the partnership, you do get that media access. Partnership. But they don't have a media. Much. They don't have a media pit. You can't put all those people on the floor. I would venture to guess that they're going to put their partnered media somewhere. They said there's no pit. I'm sure they said that to you when they told the when they told the masses there's no pit. They meant like convince them there there's is not none. a media pit. But I'm going to venture to guess that somebody like GoRuck or name your other partner is going to be able to place their media somewhere, right? Wouldn't you guess that? You would think, right? So I, I'm, I'm so that's what I'm saying is that I I, I would think that they're I'm not holding them hostage. They're they're, they're selling them. Did I, in did I hear form. or they're including them in partnerships? Is this true that, that Vendor Village is like 10 minute walk in the Texas heat from the venue? I've never found it publicly, but it's certainly been said and then verified. Like, yes, it's a it's a 10 minute walk to a separate venue. Brilliant. I mean, <laughs> I. Uh, oh, also. I, can't wrap my head. I, I mean, I've never been to the yes. venue, right? So like I can't I can't yeah, even I picture know. it. It's so no new idea. and it's so different. I can't picture it. Um, but yeah, that's how I understand it. Also. They fired our good friend Keith Knapp. Yeah. R.I.P. R. R. P. to Keith. Big, um, you're big, still alive, but not yeah. longer, no longer working. Big, <laughs> big mayhem supporter. <laughs> he was a good guy. 
he was a great guy. I say yeah. that to say, like, we didn't all. He still is a good guy. We didn't always. Yeah, sorry. Keith, yeah. Sorry. We're sorry, Keith. We didn't always agree on everything, but he, to like, I felt he always was working to get to the best solution for us. Correct. And so that was very help, like, a good breath of fresh air, at least to where he's like, hey, I hear you. Let me work on that. Do you think. And stuff changed. Yeah, I hope it's not turning back into like us versus them, you know, like, like yeah, well, that's kind of what no, I was we've always been, I'm, I believe in what CrossFit is trying to push. From the like a community, community and out. fitness and all that. Yeah. We are, tr- we are better when CrossFit is better, where it's not us against them. So I hope that that's not the narrative we're taking again, where I feel like for years it was kind of like, oh, you're a different, you're a competitor almost where yeah. it's like, no, we're all like, we're all in this together. Do you think that they don't because they can't quantify like? How well, you much can't mayhem. quantify an ROI either. I guarantee yeah. that. You know, like you can't. Well, you, yeah, you can't quantify how Mayhem's like their behind the scenes <clears throat> videos of the games helps CrossFit because they have no way of quantifying it. So they're like, yeah. well, we don't see it. We don't see the hard numbers. So you're out. Is that kind of like what well, you're I'm saying? Well, I'm not. Talking no one else. Else. I'm not talking mm-hmm. just us. I just mean in general because we're not the only ones that got that. Yeah, but no, like I'm Rory's saying, like saying us or Rory's saying maybe it's a negotiating tactic to get us to spend another however many thousand dollars at the games. But how? Because they can't even get the seats. How are they going to spend the money? Dude, I don't understand. Uh, well, well, I guess, sorry, like what I'm to trying to say like is a, be be a bigger sponsor oh, for us and to get sponsors. Oh, like we did last year, we got the campground and all that stuff. Yeah. If you were to go backwards, it wasn't free, you know, like we didn't do it. We didn't, it it costs a lot of money. (laughs) The email this guy's referencing was to all people probably who had ever applied for media or whatever. And they're Mm -hmm. like, yo, it's not going to operate the same way. But in the past, no matter what, like, I mean, people have already paid for a partnership with like, they have partners, right? Yep. And at a certain level, I I have to think, or at least like why, why Scott says that 2023 was the best ever. Well, it's not just it didn't just happen by chance. It wasn't because they were like, hey, you guys are awesome this year. It was because we were official partners and we paid a large mm. sum of money for that. Um, yeah. And with that partnership so came certain business. access. You know, that's right? the hard part. Yeah. Is so I wouldn't, I don't know. It I don't, is business. Yeah, I don't, I don't fault them for that, but I do think that it's uh, it over, is this a little, little, bit, of an fluid, over, little bit of an oversight, maybe. But, but here's, know, like, here's the, here's well, the thing. Yep. The, the, pr- the press pit to me is not, is not a spot to put the highest bidder. It's the spot to put working press. So if you look at any other league that's been around a million years longer than CrossFit, a thousand times more successful, you have specific people with specific roles cover the in that spot. So like Mayhem, Proven, HWPO, name the training camp. To me, I look at us as like a team, right? So look at like the Chiefs and the 49ers. They have a certain amount of press allocated uh, press spots allocated for their games. So I don't understand how that isn't looked at in the same light because at the end of the day, the way that athletes are supported is by media and they're being supported at this point largely by their training camps and the media that they're provided by the training camp. And so when you hamstring the media, us, right, we're not able to do our job for Mayhem Athlete we're not able to do our job for the athletes, thus making it harder for them to financially support themselves and continue to like push the sport forward. It's almost like it shouldn't be based on the highest bidder. It should be more placed on like viewership, subscribers, and like uh, engagement. I mean, I sure, like you can help. you can put GoRuck, whoever down there. Yeah, like your big big partners. But right. then I would think like, I mean, I would say like you guys and like the buttery bros, the people that I think of first, like have pretty good engagement. Like why wouldn't they want you guys down there? It's free, pretty much free to them for you guys to be there it's a spot and to get a bunch of uh, content that they're like, all right, yeah, all we got to do is give you a pass. Like that's it. But so it's my understanding and to your point, I think maybe you're right, but it's my understanding. There's not room for a media pit. That's how the email sounded. I don't understand how that's true. This is what a giant, This is what was said. The 2024 (laughs) CrossFit Games venue will have limited space to press, so fewer credentials will be issued than in years past. They're just it's it's a political it's a political way of saying like we're going to select salad just to like yeah it's like tell you hey you're going to have to pay because here look because I do agree with you but I don't agree with your logic because because here's the counterpoint is even last year it still went to the highest bidder. 
Yeah, we, we got just so many spots we just happen, because we, we just happened. We just happened to bid, and we. I, I agree. Um, honestly, I think each athlete should have one person that they could bring as a media, yeah. whatever. Because here's the deal: the more media there is, the more reach there is. If you really want CrossFit to grow, why would you not allow all? Like, obviously, there's going to be some limitations on on floor type stuff of like with CBS or ESPN or whoever, but the behind the scenes stuff, I feel like every athlete should be able to tell their story from behind the scenes and in the yeah. athlete warm up area. And as long as, you know, hey, maybe mm-hmm. there is a press pit in the athlete warm up area that they can only go like they can't get in between platforms where people are dropping bars or whatever, but you could mic it up to where like as an athlete, I would be fine with that. I don't I I think it's ridiculous. I think I've said this since 2021, this is where it goes back to my years of harboring it. I think that the, I don't know how to say this lightly. Do it. I, we own the, we own I the think what they here. need to do is consult Stay a league or somebody that has experience Who? in professional sports, CrossFit. Absolutely. Because there needs Why to be not? levels of press credentials. You can have external media, internal media, yep. right? And then you can have like, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but like athlete or team type media. Mm-hmm. So like, sorry to the brands, but you don't, that the behind the scenes content, you don't need that. So you, just because you paid a lot of money, you don't need to be back there. You're getting everything on the floor, right? Yeah. But half of our content is happening behind in, the scenes. Right. It's yeah. like, you don't let, um, uh, people are like, still going to tune in to the broadcast. If you own the broadcast and you own the, the logos on the floor and all that type of stuff. Behind the scenes, why like most most people that you want to get eyes on it don't care about, but the hardcore fans and the people that you know get behind the All athletes the and grow grow their platforms, let them own behind the scenes. I don't. It's it's the, it's always been us versus them, or we own you. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. Because ultimately, what we're trying to do is help propel everything forward. So I'm just afraid that going on if we go the other direction, here's the deal. The competitions when we don't have good access is just the most miserable experience you could possibly have trying to work. So the last thing I want is for that for myself personally, but two, like you can't do a good job yeah. when that's the case. So we'll see, but it's very concerning. What do you got? It's just so complicated. Like it's just it, no, it's not even that. It's just overly complicated. And so like for I, no reason. I, no, no. Sorry. I mean like this issue, right? It's so, like if you want to use like the professional sports league, I know what you're saying, but like those those are reserved for Associated Press, certain networks, local news, et cetera, right? So like are you saying that like at the Super Bowl, like every single player on the roster should have had their own camera guy, should have been let down to the sideline? No, they have teams. So a team guy. Yeah, there's a team guy. Yeah. It's a different how, sport. How are we okay. di- but how are we different than a team? How is proven different than a team? HWPO different than a team. But see, those are the only three that you're mentioning. There's are you oh, recommending I'm not gonna that, say like, fifteen everybody- names every time. There's training think tank, there's underdogs, there's all kinds of them. I'm just listing the three biggest ones. But if you have multiple athletes associated with the competition and you can't get one or two media people, that's a huge problem. Yeah, I get it. I, but, it, but, it, but, it, but I'll say this, like, and, and here's why it's so complicated is because there's so much history since you mentioned, like the media team was axed and like that, that was the first real submarine of the whole thing when it went bonkers. Right. Cause what happened the next year was what anybody and I could sign up and I could hold my cell phone and I could be in the press. But what was wrong with that? that? And that's a problem too. He can't do his job if that's happening, right? No, like, that's a problem. Yeah, that's you're, a problem you're, everybody wants to be in Rich Froning's lane. If you applied got for 300 it, people. How, like, I mean, what year was that? 19, 20? 18, 19, right? Uh, 18. So 17 uh, 2019 was the was the everyone gets in year. 19 was the everyone gets yeah, in. Yeah, because year. they had the national champions. Um and so what's the problem with that <laughs> is like well then there's there's literally no way for anybody who is, you know, uh, more cap it. First 100 people to apply or whatever, you know, like Yeah. I I don't know. You don't, don't think don't it should be based on some kind of viewership? I'm I don't Sorry, we have I mean the top 100 people that have like on average, the highest engagement. No, like because it's hard for problem. me to tell, like, uh, a lot of affiliates have that. the first access to it. Yeah, it's hard for me to tell, like, <laughs> a lower viewed athlete or camp or something that, that yeah, important. because, like, there's might be less fans for the Panthers and the Cowboys, but they get the same, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
I guess that would be my argument for that. Yeah, but the only difference is that they're not all playing at the same in the same stadium at the same time. Yeah, <coughs> that's the only thing. It could be looked at from a different perspective, like an out, like you're saying, an outside perspective of like, hey, maybe you get X amount for for the num for uh, X price if you're a sponsor. But then, how do we do these kind of middle tier or however we do it? You know, maybe you do pay for a spot, which we do. Do we pay for? I don't, know, I don't even know how it works. Yeah. No. And then, I mean, like here's another here's another counter argument just for the sake of discussion. Last year, if just as many people would have been given the same access as you, I would have been furious because I felt like we paid a partnership fee yep. and I wanted I wanted like an elevated level of access, right? Or if someone was using that footage to go promote whatever else that um, theoretically we signed a document that said like you can't use this for promotion of endorsements and things like that, right? So um, I think like if 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 we were to personalize it, I guess like the reason that it would make that it makes me angry is last year well, for a long, I mean, for your whole career. Right. And, and, um, then, then separately for the time that I've been here, like, I think that there's been a proven track record of showing CrossFit in a positive light, uh, promoting the sport, uh, trying to play fair and by all the rules. And so for that reason, I'm like, it seems silly that they would not have reached out in advance. And, and if they are going to tie it to a partnership fee, at least tell me that now be like, look, yeah, at least here's the price tag. You guys can be partners or you can't. And just so you know, like the this is what happens. media Partner access is, is going to come with yeah. them, right? Um, but this, this is, this is, but I think, you, I don't think you can simplify it to say, it's not a simple problem to be like anybody competing should get a cameraman or, you know, there, there has to be some sort of like, I don't think viewership is necessarily the way or whatever. Like ultimately like somebody will be pissed off. That'll be in the hands of CrossFit who gets a pass and who doesn't just, but for me, it'd be, it's just give some clarification on what you guys are trying to do and why. And I feel like no matter what the issue is, whether it's media or something else, people in this community respond well when you're like, here's why we're doing this and and uh, like it or hate it, but here's how it is. Yeah. But there's there's none of that right now where it's like, um, that's what becomes frustrating. Yeah, we're like, nothing it's clearly all the, defined. All the legal mem- mumbo jumbo they left in that email for him for like, turn to decipher, where like, it's like, you, don't, you didn't really say anything. All I know is I'm not getting a pass. I don't like the pay to play method though, because. You Why? Last year. Okay, <laughs> but, but whether or not we did that, t- in my this opinion of that I'm saying now, like we should have that access without having to do it, is what I'm saying. Why shouldn't you have to pay to play? I mean, I'm just asking. I I feel like it's a decent way. Because why should I? I being us, like why should any of the? Not I'm not talking about brands that are trying to get their brand. Pr- I'm not trying to promote Mayhem Athlete on the broadcast or whatever, right? I'm just trying to make our content. That's why should we pay to essentially give them free advertisement that we're going to do anyway? They don't you, look at it like that. They just don't. I, I yeah, agree with I, you, I don't but they don't. Look like so that have either. some sort of licensing agreement where, just like NFL Films, they have access to the footage that's filmed by those teams or. Find a way to find value in it. I don't know what that is for them, but yeah, you have to turn over all your film. You can use it for whatever you want, but we can use it too if we want to. Sure, that would be yeah. <clears throat> I, that's fair. Yeah, but and actually, that, that's been, that was that. done in the past. Like, and and that does seem like yeah. Like, here's a melt at the end of the day. Here's highlights from the team competition. Individual men, individual women, go do your own thing behind the scenes. Effectively, that's that's kind of what we're left with doing. And, and this 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 could never happen because it's just not realistic for everyone to do this or anyone to do this because it goes back to me saying that a lot of what we do for media helps support the athletes. But what happens to the CrossFit games if all of this external media is just like, nope, we're done. We're not dealing with, we're not going to pay to promote your event. They don't have internal media that does anything, anything. So what your sport is, you're just screaming in the woods and there's no, no one there to hear you. But, but yeah, I think that's a great point. I think that I think that oftentimes it feels like they're dealing in like 2017 currency when yeah, it's not they 2017 Yeah, they don't have the clout that they used to. Right. And I don't know if they're trying to gain it back yeah. or what they're trying to do. But Because I guess I'll, here I'll speak out of two sides of my mouth. Yeah, go ahead. If it was me and it was my event, I would, I would want to keep a very exclusive control over everything that I could, right? But that's with the assumption that I have this powerful media team behind me and I can actually utilize it and produce Rogue. it and monetize it and do the thing. Right. Rogue. <laughs> um, they don't so, need, so they don't nowadays, need external media. They yeah. put out good stuff. I mean, it helps like it, especially if a good partner, but they have the media team, they put out some freaking awesome content. So I could see them doing that. Right. Yeah. With CrossFit, it's like, 
What? Yeah. Without what us, doing? we're, yeah, without well, all man, the media. Uh, there's like, there's almost, like, yeah. limit the number. Like I'm saying, limit the number of spaces. Hey, here's the space. It is X amount of dollars or first 50 or whatever. You know, like there could be something. There's just, you know, I don't know. The other thing that would be nice is whatever the system is, if we could stick to it every year. <laughs> hey, Pick a date and choose and and first weekend in October or, fr- or August, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. Stick with the date. Sorry, that's my thing. But I say uh, all this to say I would I would like there to be some sort of solution. I'm not just trying to complain, to complain. Like I think that it's better for everyone if all of these outlets can do their job. Yeah, well, and it makes it easier for you. Like while you're working your ass off for twelve hours a day to be positive and not like not fighting your instinct to like. Um, not feel like Rich said, like you're in, in juxtaposition to, uh, to CrossFit where it's like us versus them, uh, and to actually have like warm fuzzies while you're, while you're putting this thing together. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, know that it's going towards something that's going to help everybody. Yeah. We're all in it together, you know, like it's still kind of a team vibe. Um, but yeah, man, I, 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 I don't have, I don't know. I, I, I share your frustration and I get it. Um, and from but a, he's still one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean all, all we can do is Sorry. you know you got to figure out how we how we use the <laughs> access that we do have to make fantastic stuff for people that that do want to digest our content um and maybe <laughs> let's not be surprised i guess if it changes again next year if if no. if this is exactly if this is how it actually plays out and there's there's not external media and they feel like they're, they're going to think it's a success or a failure right no, um, no, everything they do is a like success. <laughs> Pat on the back. Um, <laughs> if if the email it ends up being what happens, I just don't see how, like, I can't imagine we would have more than two passes if that happens. And so, yeah, it's going to be a struggle. But Well, maybe there's some fantastic Mayhem Athlete viewers who are listening to this podcast who want to sell us your ticket want to sell us your ticket or, you know, (laughs) (laughs) especially if you're in the row behind the finish line. Yeah. (laughs) Happy to compensate you. And I I don't know. What do you guys think? So by the way, there's only like, this is not a massive stadium. Like I think it'll be basically like there's got enough seats uh, about the same as the tennis stadium is the way that I understand it. I don't understand. Why would they not go with bigger? Because they sell out so quick every year like i feel like <coughs> that is shooting themselves in the foot i feel like right like the coliseum is there's like a game you play of like do we make it look full and yeah. have less seats or do we I get mean, a giant are you really or? making that much money from butts, this, and, seats. This butts and seats you know so like how I, does, I don't know the answer uh, i don't know the answer to that um how does it compare to the coliseum in terms of Coliseum, size. I think, was the first year we did it was ten thousand, and they expanded it to be fourteen or fifteen thousand. And what is this? I've just heard the number about fifteen thousand, but I don't know so where, it's where I heard size. that or if that was even. I remember public. they had to bring in like extra bleachers into the tennis stadium yeah. a couple times. So it's similar size as the Coliseum. Not the, sorry, not the Coliseum, the, the tennis, tennis stadium. stadium. You're talking about the tennis. I'm stadium. talking about the StubHub Tennis Stadium. Yeah. Ten to or Home Depot. Ten to fourteen ish thousand. You were saying like in 2010 and 11, it was probably ten thousand, and then it expanded, and it was eventually like fifteen thousand. Okay, and this one's fifteen thousand. That's what I've heard. Do you know the Coliseum or no? I don't. Is it about ten? No, okay. sorry, I don't oh, know Coliseum. He was numbers. talking about the tennis stadium. Yeah, ten four. I was just trying Wires to compare crossed. sizes <clears throat> from the Coliseum to the. Never compare sizes. <laughs> uh, here, I'm sure we could Google Coliseum at Alliant Energy Center. Um, while we do that, what are we going to talk about so we don't have an awkward pause in here? <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, I I don't have an answer. I guess I'd need to see. I, why would you not look at other sports and see how they do it and then all sit down and be like, all right, hey. If I did it, this, yeah, How can we make this better for you? Hey, maybe ask you guys to do something for them. Like, hey, can you guys do, while you're getting some of this, can you put together some type of like, you know, something rah-rah, CrossFit's good for the soul piece, You see any right? issue with them, of letting them use your – Footage, like say, hey, we'll give you a pass, kind of all That's access. We saying, no, like I mean, I think, I think what there should be something in place where if you're a quote unquote team, right? What a training camp is equivalent to a team in another yeah. sport, then you should have more behind the scenes access and maybe like a press spot or a press pit spot. And in return, that foot, you can use that footage, but it's also like licensed to CrossFit so they have access to it. You don't see an issue with that? No. Like yeah, then fair. I feel like that's, that's 100% fair. Yeah. I, I don't know why they wouldn't the, like that. 10,000 and change, like 10,200. Wow. Yeah. 
I've just thought <laughs> the Coliseum was so much bigger than Tennis Stadium. Mm. Tennis Stadium was awesome. Yeah. Coliseum's okay. So there's definitely room for a media pit if it's a bigger venue. Look, man, like I'm not drawing no, the floor no, layouts. Like I don't mean. I'm, I'm agreeing with yeah. you, though. I, I think I think it's a very political way to say like, hey, everyone who's always applied, like the, you definitely you're probably not getting a pass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. I and we just sold out yeah. last week. There will be there. <laughs> there has to be. Why not? Like I, I, the, my my, <clears throat> my problem, I guess, is more of why didn't they just tell you that a week before? Yeah. Like, hey, tickets go on sale X, am- X day. You're probably gonna, not going to get the same amount of media passes. Yeah, that's all you had to do. It's almost like the old school CrossFit way of being like, "Hey, f you." Yeah, that's what it feels like to me. And to Scott's point, like, right, it was a total dick move. And and I think some of that could be solved by like, okay, so I'm back to communication. Take Rogue as a counter example. You may not like it, but they're very clear <laughs> and they're very firm on their rules. Yep. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like, here's how it is. Like, yeah, I mean, it's take li- it or leave it. Here's the limitations. Take it or leave it. Hey, can we maybe get one more for some? No, nope. sorry, you can't. And they don't, yeah. you know, they, they actually, like to their credit, they don't play favorites. Nope. Um, they they do it fair across the board because that's what they do. I think what you're talking about, like yeah. how a professional media yeah. interaction with Yeah, you. I mean, to, to your point, the Rogue Invitational is super annoying to cover for that reason. Like the what the rules are, it's very strict. But I'm very happy that I know exactly how it's going to be every year because it's been the same every year. Yeah. And you're not sitting there and someone's walking behind a curtain somewhere. And you're like, how do I even get there? Yeah. Or I'm like, how, why is that guy back there? But yeah, exactly. I can't or whatever. Yeah. The like, rule, how did he get back there? Like, I, I just want to know. The rules are firm. They stick to them. It's across the board been the same. So for that reason, it's a, that makes it a better experience to at least know what you're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and so like to the granular level that you're talking about like i think there has to be some sort of a pit like even just for the broadcast cameras right like those people have to stand somewhere like unless they're they're moving on the floor i don't know and then you have the corners yeah you have the you have them stationed in the corners and then higher up and then the guys on the floor broadcast yeah Yeah. i don't know you feel better no forgetting to talk about it talk it out no no (laughs) <laughs> hey, so calm, man. Like, you know, when you say that you're going to burn something down, like, and then you kind of yeah, still, a that was more, awesome. I wanted to like, maybe really at least impressive. like an F-bomb or whatever. No, you know? no, that's only black <laughs> football. No, I've had plenty of time to sit on it, you know? Yeah. I think, I think my biggest complaint with the whole thing though, is if I had a year to work on this every year and everyone told me it sucked every year, I would find a way to make it better. <laughs> <laughs> but they just there accept mediocrity. <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> They accept mediocrity year after year after year. <laughs> <laughs> what could happen if you committed one year to better nutrition? The RP Diet app provides a virtual nutrition coach and a year of nutrition guidance for less than $8 a month. Take the guesswork out of your nutrition. Head over to rpstrength.com and use the code FRONING for a year of the RP Diet app for only eighty nine ninety nine. Recover faster, breathe easier, and increase your endurance with Airwave's scientifically proven performance mouthpiece. If high-intensity or interval-style training is your sport, try their patented endurance mouthpiece. I opted for the Mayhem 2-pack with one of each. For podcast listeners only, save 15% of your purchase at airwave.com forward slash froning. That's airwave.com forward slash froning. Are those shirts going to be available? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, matter of fact. What else? Uh, Mark be, Bell, I'm sure Mark Bell just texted me said hey want to come be on your podcast oh dude cool. <laughs> that's awesome you want to be on his podcast no he said he wants to come to our podcast really yeah man wait who'd you say Mark Bell like the Mark Bell yeah you gonna bench with him yeah <laughs> and we'll do some training content I'm texting him right now wow that's a big uh, a big spoiler right here I know you heard it for first <laughs> perfect timing um, did he know do you so uh, six cents not. That looked like the, like <laughs> the first in the thread. Yeah, it was. That's awesome. Yeah, but dude, that would be that would be monumental. Podcasting right now. Let's go. <laughs> it's like, come on, Mark. <laughs> um. Yeah, we need to have you guys bench together. Yeah. He does some cool sled stuff. Like he's got he a, lot a lot of, of stuff. He does a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. He's been. It seems like he's been plugging more into the CrossFit stuff lately. Yeah, he's been pr- pretty big in CrossFit. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah. he, but squarely in like in, in his podcast and everything, you know, like uh, him and K Star go way back, but yeah, um, like Glassman was on his podcast not long oh, ago really? and stuff. That's what yeah. I mean is like it seems like he's 
dipping a toe a back bit. in. I remember. Do you remember the? Was it bigger, faster, stronger? And you can pass it down too. It's a good one. Do you see that or no? I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. The shirt. Did you see my comment? The shirt will. Oh. <laughs> the shirt will come out. We have three of them coming out. We're gonna fix them a little bit too. This one's pretty good the way it is. The originals are being <laughs> handed out at Western Hunt Expo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the originals. If you're at Western Hunt Expo, is this going out before that or after? No, it'll be, be after. after. You oh. can clip it up. <laughs> What's so nice. funny? Shoot, I guess just uh, shooting arrows across the bow. I guess it's uh, the everyday hero. Yeah, I know it's so funny. I was just hoping he'd pop off. <laughs> <laughs> we may, maybe we don't want to go there on this one. Um, okay, I just don't think we have enough details yet. Okay, we don't yeah, have enough details. Enough. Other than there, there will be an in person, right? If you say so, you mean the boss? Yeah, I mean, no, I think there's going to be an in person. Okay, yeah. there's going to be an in person everyday hero. It's going to be a smaller scale this year. A little tester, make sure occupational games. No. Everyday hero games. Everyday hero games. In in person. It's going to be team style. You're going to do an individual qualifier. But Hey, someone commented on the last podcast about, um, I think it was waiters, maybe, what? being everyday heroes because they have to work on holidays. And I just who? want to clarify that where, everyday hero doesn't like, like, like guys. They, they call oh. themselves frontline <laughs> workers. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking waiters Man, with the D. Here's the deal. Yeah. Me too. Here's the deal. Like, <laughs> here's the deal. Yeah, when he said waiters, um, <laughs> waiters or waitresses, we can't. Yeah. We I can't include waiter. everybody. Like yeah. we're going kind of like public service open is yeah. essentially think of it that way. Like I appreciate. I mean, yeah, working on holidays and all that type of stuff, but we're going military, police, but there's fire, a distinct difference between an everyday medical, hero and a educators. waiter or waitress. You know, like I can say that is not an everyday hero. Yeah. yeah. I'm nothing special. <laughs> and and I've waited tables before, so. I have yeah, you, my mom was, was a waitress a li- for I was a lifeguard. 30 years. Lifeguard. And I don't think she would say that it's the same. She is know? a damn you hero. Break though. that? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what waiters are, Scott? Chest waiters? Like for duck hunting or fishing? Yeah, duck hunting or fishing? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what, it sounded. That's what that's we what thought, you, thought said. you were thinking of. I was like, like, I almost want to talk about waiters for a second. We were like, well, I'm I was like, like wait, what? people do that professionally? They just wade <laughs> through water? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it did break. Well, it's kind of... Oh, it, it was just comes apart. Yeah, it like slides up. Yeah, it was out of its spot. Um, yeah, so there will be Everyday Hero. Yeah. We'd already planned on it, and there was a change of plans from an external source, and so we're moving forward with what we were going to do. Yeah. That's all I'll say. Yeah. I'm You're gonna like make a it. government official. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way you're well, we can't, we, yeah, you can't, can't ready fire aim too much because no. we got to no. get our details out there first. Yeah, so there will be – we're going to basically do similar to what we did last year um, with – Jake wants five workouts for it, which that's good, but he wants a repeat. How, what do you feel about a repeat only after the first year? I feel like it's uh, Lazy. Lazy. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh, I think, you know, he was like, oh, I think we'll do this repeat. And I'm like, no, let's t- let's have a couple years before we do a repeat. Right. Okay. So essentially it'll be five workouts individual and we're going to take the top two. In qualifier each. will be five workouts. The qualifier right? will yeah. be five workouts. Top two. Um, we'll form a team. And if it'll basically go, if you win second place, you guys form a team. A guy will have a female and a male division. Um, not, we're not, not four person, not mixed gender. We're not mixed gendering it. Um, and if, say, first and second, say, second place can't come, first and third, first and fourth, second and fourth, whatever it is, um, we'll do an in-person at CrossFit Mayhem. Um, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun. I feel like this kind of cool because you, you very likely will be paired up with somebody you've never worked out with. Never before. worked out with. You can, you know, we'll give you enough time to, like. The only thing you share is a job, basically. Yeah. So, I think it'll be fun. I, I'm fired and up And hopefully a high level of fitness for your success. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. yeah so or it'll be. cheating cheat in the qualifier and then. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even share that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it'll be, I think it'll be cool. I think, um, you know, the the profession is very partner-based anyway. Yep. It's a little bit more fun. There's some pride in it that, hey, I'm competing for my profession. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. We may expand on it in the future, but this year we're going to try it Keep like it as is and kind of small and it. make sure it's a hit and make sure we get, you know, people like it. But I think it could be really cool. Oh, yeah. So yes, people like it and like to watch it. Like I, yeah. what I love about a condensed competition like that is like it. It makes me think. I've talked about the Invitational a couple times. It's like yeah. you have so much more opportunity as the event coordinator, like you know, programmer, and the media coverage where you can like you can be a lot more flexible. You can do a lot more cool stuff. Mm-hmm. I think the athlete experience is probably going to be top notch because you've only got you know however many it is ten people in each category. 
or 10 people in each uh, set, uh, gender. The um, So, yeah, I'm fired up, man. If you like the idea of something like that, go like Google uh, NYPD versus FDNY hockey game. Yes. It's incredible. Yes. Like, it's like a legit hockey game. I mean, these guys are, you know, from New York, so they probably have access I to I think they do like a football, full pad football game. They, they do, do it all, I think. And the hockey game, like, is just like all out. Like, there's a video of two guys just fist fighting. Like, yes. like <laughs> straight up fist fighting. Yes. <laughs> like, Dragon Ball Park. It's like, where else are you going to fist fight a cop? <laughs> not get <laughs> in trouble. Get <laughs> Speaking of hockey. If you, and also speaking of media access, <laughs> if you go to a Red Wings game, at least a few years ago, if you went to a Red Wings game as media, you were served steak and lobster in the media workroom. And um, yeah, that was pretty much all I had. So, <laughs> so. And you also knew, you and you also knew where you were going to sit for every period. And I didn't. That's how the professionals. So do. your level of expectations. I didn't have to is, sit. Is, is I didn't have high. to that's sit. That's highest, highest of the high. Is what, you're, is what I, you're telling us. I didn't have to sit next to John and Kathy eating nachos, <laughs> holding ten thousand dollars <laughs> well, in my, my hand. Stick and lobster in intermission. I'm talking Bag about when I'm out for trying their to seat so yeah. you can get a good shot. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about while I'm trying to film and someone's eating a hot dog next to me, <laughs> and someone behind me screaming at me because I'm in their way. <laughs> sit down. Yeah. Yeah. No, so you so what you're telling us is this isn't a CrossFit's fault. This is your fault for having too high of expectations. No, I don't need the steak and lobster. No. <laughs> just just this place to hold your camera would be would just, an yeah, that would just an acai <laughs> bowl and a brisket sandwich. That's yeah, all that'll yeah. suffice. Yeah, Jason's brisket sandwiches. Oh yeah, which will not be at the CrossFit Games this year. Um, but as of right now, did did you guys see the uh, hint for the first open workout? Uh, let me no no. <laughs> It's supposed to be a brand new format, the workout that's never been done Gosh, before. Here we go. Brand new format. What? Well, and possible? here's what I'm trying to wrap my head around too, is um, Castro said there would be multiple workouts. So we're bringing together two males and two females. But is that do, just for show? Well, I don't show? know. I don't know. Is it like, like, I mean, could you do more than like, of course there's like such and such and like whatever, 24 and 24, 1A. But are we trying to get people to watch them again? Or is it also B, C, and D? Like, are you? Do you think he meant like the girls' workout would be vastly different from the guys' workout? Or no, no, it's oh. there will be doing multiple workouts. I was very clear, so I don't know. If that's okay. just, just to make a good show, like a showcase. They go like for a golden barbell or something. Somebody said what? I don't know. Who's doing like multiple workouts? Like if it's the like athletes a, in the in the live announcement. Like it's a three minute AMRAP, and you rest two minutes. And you do a different three minute AMRAP. You rest two minutes, and you do a different three. It kind of is what you're saying, maybe. Or you have no, no idea. idea. That's all. That's the only way that it was put. And so, does that mean everybody in the opens doing that? Does that mean just those four athletes are doing that? Um, I don't know. Hey, I finished the BCS qualifiers the other day. They're gonna Hell be yeah. fun. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. I can't. I don't think we can. All right, we're going, going back to, to BCS. Though, that's Definitely good. can't talk about them. No, but they're sweet. Did I show you the workouts? No. Oh, they're good workouts. How, like, how many kind of like make? Is it there's four? four? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I kind of felt bad after I did them. I was like, man, these would be fun for every oh, hero. Oh. You know, like, <laughs> dang it, Whoops. I wasted them. Whoops. Oh, no, we no, can come up. We got That'd plenty. Yeah, trust we, we got plenty. Yeah, we'll be all right. What do you think a new format would be in the open? Well, I mean, if you were going to literally try and have however many hundred thousand people do it, it would have to, it would have to be like the bolt-ons like we've talked about, I would suppose, right? Like, unless you're going to have like literally three scored events in the first week. Has there been a done separately? Has there ever been an open workout that was death by something? Oh, I see. Format yeah. just of the actual workout. Oh, yeah, that's what he meant. I thought. Yes, plenty. Uh, overhead squat, toes to bar. That's death by in a way. Death by, I'm yeah. talking like a true death by. Like just like, like one, one on the minute, two burpees, two yeah. on the minute, three on the minute. I guess not. I mean, not but true. It, once you get to the upper level, like it's you it's can only get pretty much movement the done so many in a minute. You know, yeah. like too many ties. Know. Yeah, like if you do burpee box There's jumps, too many people. Doing you're gonna it. end up. I, well, they don't take that into account. What am I talking uh, about? Never seen, um, like they did this at some sectionals back in the day, like in 2010, where it was take Isabel for example. Like you're gonna do, you're gonna accumulate this much poundage over your head, but you can choose the weight well, on your barbell. I hate that. The 15, if they 12, 9. What is that workout called? No, it's not even Clean that. It's like no, it's like no, you're gonna it's lift. It's like you have to move a thousand pounds. But you could, but you, you could to. either lift 95 pounds a bunch of times. Yeah. Or 155 can, I, pounds I less times, that. or 225 I think that's less such times. A bad, like the this year in the 
age group qualifier, the muscle up thruster you just yeah. choose. That was such a stupid workout. Because there there is one clear strategy that works the best. Yeah. And it's just like a couple people figured out and a couple people won't. Well, but it's not even a strategy. Like I'm I'm for strategy, but it's just like No, I know, the but thruster, like, like take the thruster muscle up. The muscle ups yeah. were pointless. That's what I mean. And yeah. so you just get those done a, as fast as A good as workout to me time. is like well totally balanced. Even. It's not too far gymnastics leaning. It's not too far. But not every workout leaning. has to be like not that. Not every workout has the, to be like that. The ones you're talking about have but to be that like way. Like that workout was just a thruster workout. Yeah. And it was boring as hell. How about something like uh, Kelsu? Is it Kelsu? Kelsu with 100 thrusters and every minute you got to do three burpees. Yeah. Those are acceptable. That's yeah. fine. Never seen that in the yeah. open. Yeah. So you're like, okay. you're constantly yeah, kind of get, getting guess, punched in the like. stomach. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like, until finish. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here kind of thinking about like what would be even. I feel like 95 pound thrusters and toes to bar, right? Or no? Are we talking about for the open or for last? I'm year? talking for the qualifier that you just talked about just the workout. Do five and five for an AMRAP. I mean, yeah, but minutes. I'm just saying, like, I'm like, just trying to think of Why did we church it up and try to go, hey, <laughs> do whatever you want. You have to at least do 15. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why Why even put the rule that you have to do at least 15? Why not just say, hey, go out there and do as many reps as possible? I don't know. I just feel like the there's, like, some rules, but then not really any rules. Yeah. Just my opinion. I'm yeah. just here for my opinion. What else format-wise, though? We have seen, like, rest periods, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's a good guess. The on the minute the thing. Rinse and repeat. Do something on yeah, the minute. on the minute. We haven't seen. Those are brutal. What if it's just like a 20 minute on the minute workout? <laughs> just like straight up, like just 20 cal row, 15 burpees. That's like it's just, until just, death. No, I'm just saying oh. like 20 minutes and it's just on the minute. But you can't win that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Except it's just, it score? just makes minutes. no sense. Yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, I can't think of any other formats. Has there been um, uh, like a fight gone bad style? Has there been like a Max uh, reps. has there been on a, a minute? Oh, has oh, there been an AMRAP minutes. of a buy-in of some sort and max reps until completion of say seven? So like, so say like you had to the, row the twenty eleven workout. So you had to what you're saying. row a two hundred. Two, you have a two minute, and you yeah. have to row two hundred and then do max burpees over the rower until and you, you hit one hundred and fifty burpees. Oh, something like that. And it's two minutes on, one minute off. Okay, so there are a like lot that? of and what he said, like fight on bad style. We've fight not done that. Bad. And then I don't know that we've been like true intervals. There was, there's definitely no. Um, we have uh, we? two years ago. It was like there, some some gymnastics, front squat gymnastics, thrusters, and then yeah, it was there, three rounds. And there was right? yeah, and there was rest between each one. Yeah, and then there, you remember that? And then you went to the max. And then it was a clean and jerk afterwards. Um. One I was thinking of was like what they did the um, the Pat Barber workout in 2011. The get far, come back, get yeah. far, come back. So the one through. scores reps and then one scores time. Two scores are reps, one scores time. Oh, and sorry, Wadapalooza did it as one score reps and then yeah. one score time. But that's why they did that way because of that rule. Mm. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I sold my soul the, on the, the first Pat two. Barber rule. I sold my soul on the first two and then just. Died on the last Die. And Darren was screaming at you that you weren't going to win. No, he's just like, <laughs> you got to go. You got to go. <laughs> Didn't you find the clip? Yeah. And I looked at him in the stands. And I'm I just saw like, this, yeah. <laughs> this is like one of the first podcasts. Pulling the rope. Yeah. yeah. Pulling the rope. <laughs> yep, Scott found the moment. Uh, Darren, jackass. So good. He'll be here in March. Oh, really? For a couple days, yeah. Is he doing you going to work out or what? Who knows with Darren? <laughs> I just never know. We'll have to have him on an episode. Yeah. Yeah. Darren Cast. He gets so stressed. You want to um <coughs> probably not <laughs> just uh maybe um this will be less relevant to the entire population, but the Mayhem Masters specifically. They hate you. They, 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 don't, they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> they hate uh, hey, introduce your new coach. We don't want Rory as a coach. <laughs> He's not a coach. They did not like that. Well, no, his for those of you that don't know, for those of you who do, I guess the message is Mayhem Masters misunderstood what we're trying to do here. <laughs> we are very specifically focused on... Uh, you as an athlete. No, creating... Yes, you as an athlete, creating um, some specific ways to cater to you guys and, and help you grow as an athlete. What we did is we made a lot of like these workout description videos. Yeah. And not only do they go on the open and quarterfinals track, but they also went on the competitors track. And there was a lot of Open feedback. and quarterfinals liked you, yeah. right? There was the, a lot of feedback. The, the semifinal and games. I think it was also... I think also like we said, hey, as your new coach... I think there's a it was a misunderstanding of like, hey, we're giving you workout tips. What yeah, did right? people say? Oh, they were just like, I missed Rory all this. No, it was no opposition for Sugarwad. No was it last Monday? Yeah, it was very it was oh, very yeah. courteous. I can read some. 
most of them were like, hey, Roy's a good dude, but like, but he hey, sucks. look, this is no, fair. They're like, Roy's a good dude, but like, I don't want my coach. I want to be, I want somebody with the pedigree of a, either they've coached games athletes or they were a games athlete. They are a games athlete <laughs> as opposed to like a dude. Well, who it's just looking like Michael McElroy and myself are going to kind of take over since yeah. I'm in the master's but i think what's important is to be like look rich has been programming for you (laughs) still the one overseeing it all right it's not like the videos are a supplement for the day to be like hey here's some thoughts on the workout yes um weren't you a a level three or four i was a level four coach yeah Yeah. i've got listen i've got i've got (laughs) coaching chops like there's no doubt about it what's your level right now well i didn't renew so i'm all the way down to zero yeah yeah, so I can't, I I can't really claim level four anymore. I I'm never made to, it to four. I'm I was trying to a, help you out here. I was Thank a you. three at some point. Yeah, yeah, and how many years have you watched the sport? Like, oh, it's a, yeah. Anyway, so but 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 I think their gripe was legitimate, right? Yeah. Like, I so it was a misunderstanding to be like, hey, look, Rich is doing your programming. You got an army of coaches around. And by the way, I think it's also a, we can plug that for some people. I think if you really want, if you want a coach, mayhem like, performance coach. mayhem performance coaching yeah. is open to applicants right now. Like that's. That's where you get one on one. Yeah. Um, but anyways, then not, suffice it to say, like we'll be doing uh, kind of like I don't want to call it a town hall meeting, but just sort of like video conferencing with the masters um, community, and um, yeah, a lot more in, involvement by Mike um, McElroy. And uh, Jay Webb already does a really good job with that. Yes, but it w- it was funny. But well, I'll still and, be and, in there, baby. And, I'll still and be also in there. being able to go to a pure legends event or masters event will be also very good you know like separate from the game so we can instead of you guys you know the obviously the individual side is a huge piece that's going on at the crossfit games now it's a separate event so we'll be able to be down there and hanging out and doing all that yeah um which interesting enough i saw on instagram i think it was a legends um it was bob jennings um was talking specifically and they're basically like putting the call out and they were saying CrossFit's effectively funding them based on participation in the open for masters. So this would be, this is an example of them being like, all right, put your masters, money where your mouth put is. Your money where your mouth is. Yep. Um, so if you guys are plugged into that, if you want masters competition to thrive, you need to sign up and you need to participate. I'm saying all that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're rich broning. Hey, is this possible? Uh, this is just like that pop, the power clean toes bar workout. I was telling you about the unbroken 185 doesn't matter. 12 minutes, 10 power snatches at 115 on minute one. Minute two, 16 toes to bar. Must be unbroken. 10? 10? 10. At 115? At 115. I told him eight. How long? Six rounds, alternating minutes. 10 unbroken power snatches, 16 unbroken toes to bar. Eight and 16 is better. It makes I more said, sense. I said eight. I said eight, would, eight and 16 would be possible. 10 and 16? I think the it's only just reason... It's all grip. I know. That's, that's, it's that, not like... The only reason I thought that this was more possible than the power clean one is because it was 185. Like 185 I understand <laughs> for a touch and go for the 10, amount, 10 touch power g- seven clean and jerk power clean. Power clean. Okay. 10 power cleans at 185, 16 toes to bar on the next minute Why for 10? seven rounds. Eight. Well, because Sam told him eight wasn't hard enough. Yeah. He, I, Did I Sam to do him. it? No, he didn't oh, do it. Okay. He said then it before. Put his money where his mouth <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. I, d- I think he has done it now. I need to ask him because I could not do it on Broken. Sorry, I was who fine. sent that? Jake Locker. Okay. I, sa- I said it was fine. The workout's fine if it's not has to be unbroken. Like yeah. oh, maybe yeah, put yeah, the yeah. goal is unbroken and like we're, we're trying to work some grit. Maybe Five, the goal is unbroken. But yeah, but then if you can break it, if you can break it, you're fine. If it's you can break hard. it, you're yeah, done. It's still hard. Yeah. But yeah, it's, but it's, uh, it's doable. Unbroken. I was like. Because it was on compete track, and I was like, okay, it has to be unbroken. And after round one, I was like, I probably can't do this. <laughs> and then I said, Jake, what is this? He's like, well, I kind of wanted to be somewhat I love, impossible. I love when you look at Jake's stuff sometimes, and I'm like, bro. <laughs> He's like, well, and, you know. He said he wants, he goes, I, I want about 10% of the people to not be able to do a workout sometimes. I'm like, okay, that, that's fine. No. But, like, I'm <laughs> no. freaking me out. You don't out. want people not to be able to do the workout. Not to be able to finish it unbroken. Like, right. you definitely can do it not unbroken, but I wish you would have said the goal was unbroken. Yeah. Not like, must be unbroken or you fail the workout. Get out of here. Because I failed. Dude, bringing these two things together, this is one thing, like, even just listening to you guys talk about it that from time to time I'd love to sit down in this format or like put Jake here and go through, you know, he does the weekend possible workout. Well, yeah. no, you do the weekend <laughs> in review. I'd love to hear you guys go through the week of workouts. Like as a mayhem athlete, like when I'm about to sit down and do it, it's great to hear you say like, I don't think I could do that. Cause you know, yeah. the, the, uh, the open quarterfinal masters version I don't, it can't be the same one, but it was 
under 16 unbroken toes to bar and then eight unbroken muscle ups with a sandbag carry in between. Oh my gosh. And oh, that was, it was only three week. rounds. Only three. Yeah. Rounds. That was last. Oh, week. We, was, did yeah, we did that, but it was even 20, like even what we did was not possible. No. It was 25 toes to bar. You could, bar it is muscles. possible if you rest a lot, but you rest a lot, but with the, the two the minute rest and like, no, it was not like Tyler did it unbroken. He said he just stood around a lot, like yeah. in between well, all we the did movements. We did with minimal amount of breaks was the yeah. thing. Okay. Like try to do it in two sets or whatever. And I was messed up. I was messed up bad. Did you go unbroken? I, I missed my last uh, bar muscle ups. Mm. So but, it was, uh, it was 16 was toes like to bar and then. Six, it, uh, oh, it was bike, you carry. bike, yep. 16, carry. And the carry was only 50 feet, I think. Um, and then 50 feet at 150. Eight bar and then I did that with 100 pound. Jerry cans. Jerry cans. It was awful. My favorite, the jerry can. <laughs> Did you clean them? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you were wrong. I was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had, yeah, we had a big hard. debate on the Ma'am Hunt podcast about the use of jerry cans for things other than farmer's carries. And I said adamantly on the podcast that they're, they were morons for thinking <laughs> that, that you, could clean you could clean them or squat them. anything. Carry step them over yeah, them really anything else other than like a farmer's carry. And probably like a uh, bear hug. But then as soon as we got to the gym, I was like, I have to try this. And sure enough, they're great for everything. Everything. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's just yeah. a sandbag with a handle on the end. Yeah, right. Like it's just. I just don't know how well they would hold up to being dro- dropped. Yeah. Because their main uh, yeah. purpose is not to get thrown over your shoulder yeah. like a sandbag. I don't know. But, but I think for carries in the front, they're great because they're not as wide as the. Like, because here for me, like with the 150. Holding, mm-hmm. it's just that my arms, yeah. like I have long arms too, but it's just like I get so sweaty that I can't even. Oh, yeah. So like those uh, jerry cans you can hold pretty well. Right? I love it just because it's my only competitive advantage, you know, oh, like Goldie beats arms. me through like 16 unbroken toes to bar yeah, and then I pick, pick that thing, thing up and he's here. like, oh God. I just Goldie's put my hands around it. Like yeah. he's, just, and it he's just trying to like basically compress <laughs> it from the sides. <laughs> just using all of his shoulders. <laughs> if I can interlock my fingers, I'm I just like yeah. dislocate both yeah. middle fingers and or just walk with it. I go, I go here. Yeah, I know you, yeah. that's what yeah. you said. Yeah. I can't get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just dislocate my fingers and walk. Because like once they lock those knuckles in, I can go. Sandbag carry is Rory's circus trick. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the time oh, on the, him on ben. The, with Ben oh. in the army trip? Never forget. You oh beat man. Ben on the was it like ben? 20 minutes? Well, the, the back story is that before we went to the army base, Ben walked into my <laughs> office and uh, I get I was going to say I wasn't used to him by him, but I was. But he was, we were having some kind of like back and forth, just joking. And then he's like, no, like literally there was no workout on the face of the earth that you can beat me at. <laughs> Nothing, zero, like not one. And we found two that trip, right? Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> first one was a uh, bike and press. Maybe it was push oh, trip or something. Oh, yeah. But the second one was literally we just, got, we just got onto a... Onto a uh, treadmill, yep. saw, yeah, runner, and just walked. Oh yeah, and whoever like, would whoever quit, quit, you couldn't see their other monitor. Yeah. Oh, they're no. just staring at each other walking. They held the thing for like twenty something minutes walking. One fifty, yeah. And I, and I just yeah. stayed going. What? I just stayed going. And Ben would walk fast and then rest. Oh, and then he started running towards fast. the end, like I knew he was going to quit. And so I got <laughs> nervous, and I was like, "Oh shit, I better keep going." You were way and ahead I, of him. No, uh, oh. we were close, right? By the end of it, we were like surprising. Let's we'll go back and watch. Yeah, the YouTube but video. You, you beat him by a bit. Yeah, yeah. I want to like know what the first minutes? workout is. We'll have to go back and watch. Yeah, it was one of the Army remember. Warrior okay. Fitness workouts. I don't or remember. It, it, it might have been seventy, but yeah, it was twenty. It was like eight, eighteen or twenty minutes. That was a great. Was it a hundred pounds handbag? I don't know. It, it definitely wasn't one fifty. Oh, but okay. Still, it was impressive. It was, it was. They held it for a long it was, freaking time. It was, time. It was almost <laughs> like, all right, guys. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to watch this, this anymore. Why did you two of you do it this? It was like Roe versus Boz, but it was Roe versus Ben. Because Ben Cause was he talking ben was so talking much talking trash. Because okay. he said that, and I, I was like, obstacle, what is it? Was what Obstacle Course the last one? And he beat you on that? Oh, yeah, he beat me. He cleaned me up yep. on that. I think it might have just been a bike. back forth on all the things he did. Was it just a bike? 50 cal bike or something I think it was just a bike. Or DT? No. No, it wouldn't have been that. I it definitely it, had a bike. I know that. I think you got to call out the workouts, whatever they oh, were. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The DT was, we did a full <laughs> workout, and you guys alternated rounds, yeah, and you were was, paired up with Chandler. Chandler, it was messed up, and yeah. I had not been doing any barbell cycling. Yeah. The workout messed me up. <laughs> He's great at that. <laughs> that was, was like, the DT. It's the slamming clean. Yeah, oh, I was yeah. so happy the other day when Dom was like, no bouncing the bar off your quads during the hang clean. Thank you. It's such a, I hate that. I think it should I don't be think outlawed. it's the movement standards. I think it should be outlawed. Yeah. I don't what think is it? it? When people do the like, clean. they hang clean and they bounce it mm. off their quads. It At no point, most of the time, are your arms, are your arms straight. straight. And it's a weird, like, I, I think it should be outlawed. But I don't know. I can never figure out how to do it. I can't do it. Maybe I can do it with 115. Like it so I can do it with 115, yeah. And then, then my, and my quads are sort of the touch for a few days because yeah. they're all bruised I don't up. Th- I think it should be outlawed. Yeah, I think it's dangerous. 
I think it's a safety Uncommon thing. movement clause. Un- yeah. Been Bastards. there. Been there. <laughs> Been there. What was that, the team series? You and did it, it after we did it, right? Yeah. yeah. And it, you were like, dude, this works. And it worked. Yeah. Me and <laughs> Bridges. Sure it was one of the... It was 185 clean and, clean and jerks. I don't know and what it was. we would drop it from overhead. If we didn't mersky it, yeah. you'd catch it, go down, touch, and come up. But you could cycle you the bar a whole lot faster. A bit, yeah. And you didn't have to touch and you go. You didn't have to... You could touch and go without the eccentric part of it. And it I mean, nice. it was nice. And, and we you got called on it smashed though? everybody. And of course, they used the... We deem that movement uncommon clause. Yeah, uncommon. You know, you're just like, oh, bullshit. Just say next year you can't do it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Say we Because at no that, point yeah. did we cheat do the standard. anything wrong. No. Yeah. It wasn't a rule, but they didn't expect to see it type of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's always I, like, hey, after the fact, Castro, hey, you can't pick up the sled and run it. Yeah, but the first three sl- three right, heats already right, did it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just <laughs> was, Don't punish me for them. I just was listening to Oh, him Rogan, talk about the- uh, The spear? It was something he was talking about holding this like on it's on the athlete to uphold the standard, not the not necessarily up hold the standard, but the judge. It was like I don't know what you're talking about. He did one of his reviews or whatever, and you're just Who? Dave. I was talking about on Rogan's podcast oh. with you're talking about the uncommon thing. This is like a more serious version of it. It was with uh, Cam Haynes and Steve Ranella, mm-hmm. and he there was a guy in Canada that I don't remember the season. It must have been in bow season. He killed a grizzly bear with a spear. Holy. And there's not a law that says you can't do it, but there's also not one that says you can do it. And (laughs) so I guess, and he made a video about it. I guess he got in trouble. Aren't they a lot of them like primitive weapon? I don't, I don't know. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I guess he got in trouble because it wasn't like. Was it the same guy that killed one with the bison with the GoPro on it? Remember that? No, but that was crazy. That was crazy. Or it's just running. No, so he's sitting in a tree and these things run under the tree and he just jabs it. And it's the GoPros on yeah. the like, and so blood's just flying yeah. everywhere. It was incredible. Yeah. But someone did, so someone did that with a grizzly bear with a spear. Oof. And it was one That's of those crazy. things where they didn't, just walking around I guess they with didn't a think freaking, uh, it would happen. Wheelbarrow. For your yeah. Ball. Was it like uh, Anthony Hopkins style on the edge where like the bear went up and he just planted it and the bear fell on him? Or did he actually like <laughs> spear it? That's a great question. They throw it, know. right? He threw, he threw him. I'm, I'm sure. Guessing. Yeah. yeah. Threw it and then it had his 45. <laughs> or yeah. <laughs> You've seen yeah, that movie, I'm right? Not hunting bear. Uh, Edge, oh, no. Edge, Edge, Anthony. Edge. Oh, bro. Sir Anthony Hopkins. Sir Anthony Hopkins, and uh, who's the bad guy? Is uh, what's his name? Who just shot somebody on a set oh. on accident? No, uh, yeah, it wasn't his fault, but it's somebody's fault. Right, right. the gun just went off and touched trigger. Yep. Um, oh, oh it's a yeah, great movie. the the real, he's real he's real liberal, real against guns, right? I can't believe I can't remember his name yeah. right now. He's one of the brothers. Uh, his, his brother was yeah, in yeah. Backdraft. Uh, <laughs> he's in Thirty Rock. I don't know exactly what you're talking. What's his name, Scott? It was a, it was on a movie set. Yeah, yeah Rust. That's the name of the movie. Hilarious. Can't think of his name. Um, it's not hilarious what happened, but no, it's not hilarious what happened. But his name. Um, I thought you were looking up. I don't remember. What is his name? Look at uh, the cast of Thirty Rock. He's the main dude. It's Tina Fey and. Uh, wow, we're gonna get laid into him. Just on laid this. into. If it was Taylor Swift, you'd remember. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Okay, and also I want to clarify. Everybody was like, Here we go. you just don't like Patrick Mahomes because he's great. Opposite, actually. I Oh, it was I, Alec Baldwin. Alec I was Baldwin. a Alec I didn't Baldwin. Think it, I didn't think Alec it was him. What it is. Yeah. I don't know why I want to say Ben Affleck. Um, I was a big fan of the Chiefs till this year. I like Patrick Mahomes. His, beha- his behavior, player. you didn't his like beha- his behavior. I didn't yeah. like how whiny he was on the sidelines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my only thing. Like, yeah, hell yeah, he's great. I think he's one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play. It's not why I don't like him. That's yeah. it. Somebody right. was like, I'm just saying, I'm just taking what you said verbatim. I'm like, actually, I didn't say that verbatim. <laughs> you no, you're taking Scott's clip of yeah, what I said. Exactly. You're taking I did hot see take. that. Um, I did see that Kelsey, uh, Andy Reid was asked about like the interaction with Travis Kelsey had, and he said, he's like, he gets fired uh, whatever. up on he goes, just like, yeah. he goes, Well, he, he has to say that, though. He yeah, can't just true. throw his player in yeah, the bus. True. True. Andy Reid about went down. Yeah. I was like, and then um, someone was saying, Man, I would have just pulled him out, and it's like, no, you wouldn't have, dude. You can't. He's <laughs> you your best tight that. end. It's a Super Bowl. Yeah, you're not gonna do that. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yeah, that you do that in middle school or high yeah. school. We're or, past the life yeah. lessons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You're like, all right, shut up and get out there and do your job. Yeah, you know. But he did. He dealt with it like, like he was just cool as a cucumber. Yeah. He almost knocked him over and like yeah, and yelled like, at him, and then, then like, Andy hey, Reid was back. like, "All right, well, I got shit to do here, buddy." Yeah. Like, <laughs> Andy <laughs> message received. Andy Reid is awesome. That's the one thing I like about the Kansas City Chiefs is Andy Reid. So. Um, did you watch the game? I did. Oh, you caved. I did. Yeah. It was a great game. It was a good game. Yeah. 
it was. I want to see Brock Purdy when I started to like him more and more. The more I watched about him, like leading in the yeah. Super Bowl, I was like, man, he's a cool dude. I just still hate Bosa's helmet and Kittle's yeah. helmet. Yeah, it looks so <laughs> stupid. What was uh, what was your review, and how did you make the squirrel egg rolls? Man, the egg rolls were great, and a lot of people ate them having not known they were squirrel and said they were great and then found out they were squirrel and then magically, uh, I don't know, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden <laughs> they weren't good. They were great. It was easy. It was easy to do. Prep kind of sucks. Uh, deboning squirrels is really oh, yeah. hard. Jason did that. How um, did he do it? Just cut all the meat off the squirrel and then ground them up. Didn't wow. you say there was that method for, like, pressure cooking? Yeah, pressure cooking it, but we were we, yeah, were, we needed ground off. Meat, so he did that, and then uh, I just browned the meat, threw some soy sauce in there, some pepper, took two bags of like coleslaw mix, didn't put the mix in there, just the cabbage, um, kind of like over low heat, kind of wilted it a little bit, threw in um, some ginger, some garlic, basically to taste, uh, however you like it, and then threw in some soy sauce and just kind of slowly cooked it all together, and then threw in some matchstick carrots at the end for some crunch cooked them a little bit, but not nearly as much as the cabbage. Put the squirrel in there, mixed it all up, tasted it, maybe add a little bit more soy sauce or ginger or whatever you want to add in there, and then just got egg roll paper and threw it in there, wrapped it up, little egg wash, folded it up, took it outside, because you know how many fry stuff inside, just the house smells like it for yeah. a month. So just peanut oil in a um, oh, you got a electric fryer? fry pan. No, right. just electric fry pan. Just okay. put a little bit in there yeah, and then put you know eight or ten in there. And then would rotate them every couple minutes to where they were all brown. They were great. You could do, honestly, I was thinking about doing with elk. Elk would be really good in those two. How many squirrels do you think that took to make that? It took that? eight squirrels for almost two pounds. Oh, pound my pound gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did it compare to meat-wise? Pork? Uh, it tastes like a pork egg roll or chicken, even chicken egg roll. I mean, at, at that point, you're tasting soy sauce, ginger, garlic, and meat, you know? So they were good. Did you try any of the meat before you put it in there just yeah. to see? Yeah. Tasted fine. Tastes good. I had I mean, it, What I would, uh, before it was ground, I would say it's like uh, dark meat chicken. Yeah. You know, okay. not exactly like chicken. Yeah. It's not gamey at all, surprisingly. Yeah. Something Juice like worth the squeeze? Like, I mean, like, it's would, a lot. Other, it yeah. is a lot. Yeah. It's worth the squeeze in the fact that my son freaking loves to yeah. squirrel hunt and gets fired up about it. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of work. I mean, we walked, what, six miles, five miles probably to get two squirrels. Yeah. It's, yes. Come to my house, bro. Well, that's what you think until you get out there with a freaking gun and you're trying to shoot them. Okay. You know, okay. like, it's, it's, in the deer stand, me and, I, me and Ben yeah. the one day saw 15 of them. Never mind three of them were having an orgy on a tree, but, <laughs> uh, but seriously, it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and, like, it's just, you're outside, kids love it, you're learning that. That is irreplaceable. But if I'm to take all of the, like the emotional out of it, if you're talking about hunting for meat, like that's not choice number one. about hunting for meat, that's not what I would go yeah. do. But um, um, it's fun. <clears throat> would you? Do you have a 22 rifle? I have a 22, a 17 HMR. And have you thought about like just like bring him out to the tree stand, sitting in it would, there? You'd need it with a suppressor. Why? If you're deer hunting at the same time. Oh no no no! Oh, I'm you're just, just saying, saying if you went out there right now and just yeah, maybe run and shot could. some squirrels. Not as much fun though. I like to walk around and try. Yeah no, it's not. I shot a couple walking around. Probably get more. You know, with eight seventeen. Um, but yeah, like yeah. if you if uh, for me if I wanted to shoot him with a rifle, I would probably need to be. I want to go down. rabbit hunting with Darren and his dad. That sounds awesome. Like I said, all the emotion, the kids being out there learning, li like watching Trice just like not be afraid to run up and grab an animal when it's trying to yeah. run away. Cool, like loves it, has fun, awesome. But to go out and like if I had to provide for my family by only eating squirrel, which they did at some point, like yeah. Like, part of this area was built on people just killing squirrels. Be a rough life. You know? Hey, put that part where he's talking about Trice loving running up and grabbing <laughs> animals that are running away from him. Use that clip, please. He does um, love doing that. Wait, what happened to the bear guy? Bear guy? The spear guy. You get in trouble? I don't know what the legal repercussions were of it. Okay. Ramifications? Yeah. What, were they, what was the discussion about? On the, They were just talking about the story on uh, the podcast. Yeah, it was part of a bigger discussion, but that was that was part of it where... They were talking about, like, there was no legal precedent for that because no one, I guess no one had tried to do it or whatever in that season. So hmm. it's a very good podcast, though, if we're you like hunting. We're talking about meat still. Uh, I used my pit boss. I smoked on it for the first time. How'd it go? Uh, I smoked a brisket, and it went amazing. Nice. Hey, word of the wise, take the grate off 
and put down tinfoil. Aluminum you, foil. You're never, oh, sorry. Yeah, aluminum foil. Because <laughs> you're never going to, uh, if clean. you're like me, you're never going to clean it. And then the temperature just spikes at rain, like the yeah. grease will all catch on fire. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so you know how there's like a grease catcher basically underneath yeah. and it pours out into the bucket? Mm -hmm. That thing eventually is going to just get all junked up and clunked up. Like, So just put foil over it now. And you'll never have to think about it again. But don't you open and close it to like let more smoke? I like, I do works. like the, yeah, but or you could poke holes or whatever. Heat. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could find a way like to make yeah. direct heat still work. Okay. Um, because yeah, I like cut a door out of it or whatever, but like, it'll still save you like. Really? Yeah. Just, and then you can just ball that up and then yep. replace it if you need to. Yep. Ah. Cleaning okay. it sucks. Cleaning it yeah. sucks. And eventually they'll like start catching on fire and stuff. Yeah. I've know. had mine like. Oh yeah. High flames. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. I never put water on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, give me a bottle of water. He was yeah. like, Are you not, you're not supposed to use water on get, get uh, I need on, uh, grease fire. I'm like, don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you get enough, you get enough water on it. It'll BTUs, put it out. Yeah. Enough, uh, enough GPMs. Don't overtake those BTUs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, what, got, uh, that's what I always say. For Christmas, I got some of those meat eater Bluetooth thermometers. Oh, I've heard of that. They're so cool. Dude, they're so nice. They're that's so what I have. Nice, I have yeah. one of those. It was like, I smoked a brisket, I say that, but, like, it's all automated. Like, the grill Dude, has the Wi-Fi on it. Brisket's in incredible. Beef ribs. Beef I, ribs. I, have, I ha far, actually have some in my freezer. Uh, by far superior to brisket. Really? In ease of cooking, and I think in is it Are they similar, like, meat? I would think uh, they're totally different. I mean, it's not like brisket is, like, right here yep, on a cow, so, I mean, yeah. ribs are right here. I, I think they're incredible. Have you I had like any of the I mean, beef ribs. I, I like cooked? beef ribs. I think. Yeah, I've had them once here, and then we got them. Charlie got them for yeah. us at BCS Classic. They're in their, I, I shouldn't say superior because I I'm, if somebody cooks a brisket right, it's great. A brisket to me is more intensive. Do you wrap? Did you wrap yours or oh, did yeah. you just let it? Yeah. So with beef ribs, you don't have to wrap them. Really? You just let it ride, and it cooks faster. They're incredible. Beef ribs yeah, are it was a, freaking incredible. It was. I mean, it was exhausting because it was my first time. So what I do with beef ribs. Uh, garlic, salt, pepper, and then I'll take uh, Sweet Baby Ray's, the Carolina Gold, and I'll just, like, lather it on there. Just let it baste sit on it top up. of it, baste it, and then I'll just throw them on the thing, on the grate, pop it at 225, and, and pull them off at 203. When mm -hmm. the temperature gets to 203, How that's that all take? you have to do. 12 hours or so? Four or five hours. Oh. Yeah. It's, like, half the time of a brisket. It's Did you get a full brisket, or did you yeah, just get the full flat? Brisket. Okay. And that so is stressful, And then the dude. brisket, like, you, you got, like, $60 worth of meat on your grill, and you're yeah, like, I don't screw this up, don't yeah, screw this up. and, yeah, if the, like, I've had the power go out on a yeah. brisket one time. It's just a night. And it goes through the night a lot of the time. And it so, was through the night. Yeah, so, no. So, I was getting what, up and checking, like, a baby. So, what's nice about the beef ribs, say you got a two or three o'clocker, eight yeah. o'clock. Yeah. And you're, you'll be done by the, it's, they're awesome. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty exhausting. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to do it right, so that's why I got up in the middle of the night and messed with it. Well, if you wanted to do it right, you shouldn't have done it on an electric smoker. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that people... people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. It, it you has didn't to be start a, the sauna four hours ago? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a stick burner. Is what oh, people tell you. Yeah, it has you to be cheat, a stick yeah. burner. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I like good food and also so like nice. ease of... Ease. You know, yeah. Like, you just set the temperature on, the, on it, and I have it on my phone. I have the meter probe in it. And I just went to bed and I checked it. I go, oh, it's not ready it's good yet. To go. yep. Back to bed. Yep. Yeah. That's like a, that's like a purist in any pursuit. You I know, where yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. oh, you fly fish. Oh, you're using a traditional bow. Yeah, yeah you gotta exactly. You got to go cut the tree down and right. use the wood that you get. Or they're like, well, you're a fly fisherman. Oh yeah. Do you tie your own flies? I'm like, no, I, I've got <laughs> two kids and they're both in three sports and I got a job <laughs> Yeah. and I just like to fish if I can get five minutes every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. Uh, right. Mountain Ops launch was super successful. Thanks everybody who, um, you know, check that out. I think it was some screaming deals. So uh, going. there's an even more exciting giveaway coming around the corner. Uh, so it? probably next episode we'll talk about it. Oh. All right. Has to do with hot and cold stuff. Hot and, cold. and great new flavors. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Yeah.